Welcome back to season three on Connie Selica, my 1977 Toyota Celica. What do we got planned this season? Well, stay tuned to find out. If you guys have been following along with this build, and if you haven't, go back and watch season one and season two, because you can watch me and Moose and Peter and Ken and all of the guys suffer as we try to uh, resto mod this old Celica. It's been a lot of fun, it's but pretty it's pretty epic. It is, it is, it's a big job, and it's been one that we've worked on kind of as a, uh, a side hustle. It's been like a day a month for uh, three years now. <laughs> it's been three years since I bought it. It's really been about two years of actual, I was working on it a day a month. So there isn't that many man hours in this build, but it's still pretty evolved when you put all new everything underneath an old body like this. So it's been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed it. And this year, the goal is to make this thing whole again, to get it painted, to get an interior in it, to take care of those little issues that we discovered at the end of last season when we track tested it, like get the brakes working and put a new windscreen in it that's not cracked and put a new gas cap on it. As a matter of fact, PT, come and show the people the new gas cap. This thing is fancy. Woo. This is a new old stock Toyota gas cap specifically for these uh, Celica coupes. They call it the aero style cap because as you can see, there's like this aero type of uh, shape on it and it flips open. I'm, I'm spazzing out about which way to flip it open. But as you can see, it flips open like that for a key inside. Anyway, I think today the plan is to do a couple of things that we need to do before we start stripping it down and getting, getting it ready for paint because really that's the the focus of the first part of this season is going to be get it, getting it painted and looking good. So job one for us today is to do something about the hole for the center tunnel. Why don't we jump in the car and we'll have a quick chat about that. So one of the last jobs we have to do as far as uh, welding on the car before it goes to paint is to patch up the tunnel here. If you guys recall from last season, we had to cut a little bit of the tunnel here to accommodate the, uh, the shifter off of this J160 transmission that goes with the Beams engine. But we do have this original uh, shifter boot, which you can see actually fits really well on the Beams shifter lever. It has a metal plate inside of it. So we're gonna take that metal plate off the boot and lay it here and kind of map out what we need to patch. And then we wanna make sure that this plate will bolt to the tunnel so that this can be held down and make a good seal so that we don't have you know fumes coming up in the cabin. So. That'll be job one as far as like fabrication type stuff goes. Just like that, we've got ourselves, I guess we're gonna call this a block off plate, right sure, DP? Sure, that works. I, I've gotta say, you know, when you, I always think of this, I'm like, oh, this will take 20 minutes max. What is it, just a couple of cuts? No, it always turns into an hour plus job fabricating these small little items that no one really appreciates. I appreciate you. I appreciate it. Exactly. Man. I appreciate it. So <laughs> moving forward here, what we need to do now is figure out how to, where to mount our little bracket here, which is going to hold the rubber in place. So I think what we're gonna do is just mark these out and drill some holes and we'll go from there. It's time to peek under Connie's skirt here, everyone. Boom, Ooh, look at that. Wee. Ooh, we got fasteners on all four corners and the boot is in place and it's uh, making a good seal now, except for this little uh, <laughs> half moon we have here that Moose clearanced for the, uh, the shifter and I think in the end we didn't actually need to do that but we're gonna fill that up we're gonna cut a little plate off and cover that up so that's sealed up we'll we'll weld that in I think I think so but this plate here we're not gonna weld on we're gonna actually bond it on with like seam sealer after it's painted and that way it'll always be a removable panel if we need to remove it say for easing transmission yeah removal. I think it'll be way easier with the transmission to remove it like that right yeah yeah so we'll get it painted, we'll get it, and then we'll bolt it and seal it down. This will bolt it in place. So really all we have to do is plug this hole. We'll use like a flat fastener here, but there's gonna be carpet over all this anyway, so it won't, it, you know, even the bolt under the carpet, I don't think will show up, because it'll be under nah, padding there. Yeah. So that is good progress, PT. What do you say we uh, figure out how to fill this hole and then uh, we move on to filling other holes? I 
guess it's safe to take this uh, t-shirt off the dash here because PT's done welding that in. It looks good to me. We could get fancy and grind the welds, but it's all going to be underneath carpet anyway. So that, that plugs the hole beautifully. We are all done here in the tunnel. So I think we're going to move on to figuring out how to mount the seat. We're going to use the same seat that we had in the driver's spot into the passenger side because I've ordered two more of these Cobra RSR seats from my buddy Carl at Perry Performance in Laval, uh, Quebec. Just went diving into the stash of Celica parts over there and found the old uh, Corbo seat mount that came with those Corbo, uh, what were they called, GT2s or GTS2s? Something like that, yeah. The car. So we figured we'd try to like reuse this if we can as a base for this uh, Cobra seat. And I've got these old uh, Recaro sliders that we used originally with this bracket. So we know it fits this bracket which fits the chassis. And we've just realized, Eureka, these Recaro sliders have the bolt holes in the right spot for the bottom of this Cobra seat. So we're gonna yes. be able to bolt this on here, bolt this on here, and bolt it in the car. The question is headroom. Are we gonna have enough headroom for like a normal sized human being to ride shotgun? So we're gonna test that theory right now. If we don't have enough room, then we'll modify the floor pan and this, this bracket to lower the seat as much as we can, but hopefully retain the sliders because Having a passenger to be able to dial themselves in is a, is a happy thing to do. So, by the way, Pete, check out this, this paperwork from Cobra here. It's been like foamed by Pete. Your, your brother from another mother in the UK foamed this seat for me. Actually, I just went over there and did this for oh. UDP. I appreciate you. All right, well, let's bolt this thing together and throw it in the car. It's looking pretty good, DP. It does look good it in there. It looks like uh, Clears it the roll belongs bar nice. nice and low here. But the real test is really how a average six foot person would fit in here. I mean, the car's already pretty tiny. It is a tight fit for sure. Um, oh man. Is... Why does nothing ever work out for us? <laughs> you do not Why have a lot Why does it all of... have to be cutting and grinding and uh... chopping on this car? Cause yeah, this thing right here. Your head is gonna hit damn that. damn sunroof. But yeah. even then you kind of feel like you're, you're sitting kind of high. Yeah, like your eyes at the top of the windscreen yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, so um, I, think we're gonna have to chop this whole area up and and move it down but I'd like to first see what a large human being would would look like sitting in here and we have a special guest oh look at the look at the graceful oh, man. oh you're good oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is perfect. He's like a stuffed sausage. He could totally go for a ride in your car. Oh yeah, I've got lots of knee clearance and yeah. plenty, lots of knee clearance, all kinds of headroom. Oh my God, what a mess. All right, well, I guess we know the answer, boys. We got to cut these uh, stock floor mounts out and get the seat on the floor. We've been busy over here prepping this side of the floor for a mounting system similar to what we have on the driver's side, which means removing the factory mounts for the rear part, which as you can see, we used a, uh, a spot well drill bit to drill those out so we could just pop that right out of the chassis as cleanly as possible. Pete took the old uh, di or angle grinder, I guess you'd call it, and cut the front cross member out. It was a bit of a job, then he grinded that down. And now uh, he's bent up this patch panel, which is gonna fill the hole from this inner OE mount. So I've cleaned up, prepped the metal with the old uh, wire wheel of death here. So it is ready to get welded in. So. I think it's time we uh, roll the welder over here. Pete can work his magic welding that in, and then we'll get to fabricating those cross members that the mount and sliders will mount on. So progress is being made. I fit in here pretty well now, Pete. We're on a slider, so I can move the seat forward and backward, as you can see. And uh, with the seat all the way back, I have full leg room. Like, I can stretch right out here, which is nice. I think Moose would still look like a bit of a stuffed sausage in here. He's so much uh, manlier, there wouldn't be a lot of room, but I mean, this just isn't a car that's really Moose friendly, is it? So, but for a normal sized guy like me, I'm perfectly happy yeah, sitting over here. Good. Like we could go on a road trip in this car and I could sit here and be comfortable. 
I think that's the main objective, right? I think it is, yeah. I mean, ultimately, I'd like to take this thing maybe down to the tail of the dragon or something like that. And to do that, it's nice to go with a friend so that we can both fit in here and not have to take separate cars or something. So, um, yeah, man, I'm really happy with this. I think this is perfect. Small interlude here from all the welding and hacking and cutting that's going on there. Our buddy Adam here from Froggy Auto, Auto Blast. Blast in Niagara Falls, yes. He's also a JDM guy. You lived in Japan for a while. Uh, 12 years. And yeah. you, you were importing stuff uh, yeah, over here? Yeah, broker to start off brokering part. No, I should just go back. I, Me and Adam actually brought yes. some stuff in way yeah. back in the day. Yeah. I did ESL, brokered parts. Dave, or Peter approached me when you were working with the magazine. Yep, modified, yep. Modified, yep. And that was, I, yeah, so we did a little parts exchange and you helped exploit the business. Thank you very much. No Does problem. Feast? Feast Auto Group. Feast yeah, Auto Group. Yes. And are you still operating? Still operating. Still buying cars. Everything's to the U.S. now. I got the JDM chopper oh, yeah, on like too. This. He's living that legit Japanese style life. This is a new tech. This is an oil brand. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that a Japanese oil brand? Yeah, it's a good one. So today's project is getting this windscreen out. Yes. Prior to paint, obviously we want to take as much glass out of the mm -hmm. car as we can. And we figured since Adam's in the glass business, though we should say you're not in the classic car No, business. I'm not. But I'm not afraid to try. Yes. Yeah. And he's a lot more qualified than I am to do yes. this. So he's brought some cool tools for us to try out. Old old uh, and new and new and, and we're just basic. gonna work our way around here and see what happens but you can see even just from a little bit of early prying around the trim here that we've got lots of Arizona sand coming out of the old girl here so we are gonna get at it so I'm just dragging this along here collecting yeah. all the dirt in the process yeah hoping to feel some sort of clip, clip I see yeah there's something there so you were saying earlier that you think there are studs inside there's the studs on frame? the body side yeah. yeah where those clips are retained to okay um, Oh yeah, that's coming up. For I'm just sure. being gentle. This yeah. may actually be slid into a, a groove. Oh, maybe it's. Forgive me. I, I'm not. This... No, we know this is your first shot at a yeah, 77 yeah. Celica. But we're so. just going at it slowly. Yeah. Hoping to pry this. Oh, there, there she goes. We got some action here. Yes. Action. No pressure, Adam. But these uh, trim pieces cannot be bought anymore. No. So, uh... No. Don't mess them up. Yeah. So this trim is just retained by the glue. We see a clip there, but... Amazing. 40 years later. Mm. Yeah, she's Missed coming up pretty up. good. I wonder though if it's... There. Oh no, there she comes. Wow! Bam! So here's your clips. Look at this guy right oh, here. Oh yeah, it came right out. Came oh, right out. look at this. Still, you can still see look the zinc plating. Wow! There is <laughs> no <laughs> rust on that. That is wild. Brilliant. Okay. Ah, bam. There we go. That was a yeah. good sound. Oh lord. <laughs> in there now. There she goes. Bam. Oh, bam. Whoa. Look at that old muddy boomerang. I don't eh? think we heard it in any way. No, it looks like it's. We may have to um, just tweak those little. Where the clips came yeah. out, have to roll that edge back in, yeah. but, but that's it's, easy peasy. It's built up with butyl, so yeah. a lot of it acting as a filler. And we're just going to go gently out, slowly. And now we'll see it's coming out of the bottom of the lip. Yeah. So grab down here, the corner, yep. and we'll just wiggle it up gently. I'm wiggling. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Beautiful. Yeah, oh, you Whoa. didn't break it. Ooh. We're yeah. hanging us on the wall, hanging on the wall, right? We figured while well, we had Adam here, why not do the rear glass too? He did such a good job on the front. So oh, yeah. it was the same process, just popping off the, the chrome trim and then digging out this ancient mm. seal, which was hard as a rock. It was breaking off for the most part. I had to go back it off. I had to cut it back with a knife and slowly etch it out of the way. Yeah. Being careful not to nick the edges because this will break and we don't want to do that. No, we don't want to have to replace this piece if we don't have to. But so. uh, yeah, we got that trim off and then I carefully went around the perimeter and loosened off the butyl. So now when we push it, it should. Should just pop up? In theory. Okay, yeah, okay, up, up, up. Okay, got it, look at that. Oops. We're catching on the uh, defrost. Oh, there's a uh, wire here Let too. me, um, I'm gonna wiggle this one, one second. All right, bam, you got the other one? Is it wig just pull Yeah, yeah, down? just wiggle it left to right. Yeah, there bam, look at that, you saved the window. Woo, yeah, brilliant. One last job to do before we call this episode a wrap, and that is patch up all these little holes where the old factory trim went. The trim that went here and along the bottom it was just kind of like cheap plasticky stuff. It was like garden center stuff. I just don't like the look of it. So I'm gonna make that all go away. So Pete's gonna go around and zap these, I guess just like literally tack weld style. Yeah, just that's the hope. Throw a tack in there. <laughs> Deflecting the metal too much.
That's a lot of work, PT. I haven't done that much manual labor in a very long time. I'm sore, my neck hurts, I'm tired. Thankfully we had Ken come in and uh, save the day for there. Yeah, Ken did take a lot of the load there and he's worked on a lot of this fiddly stuff before so he was great for taking out windows and trim and stuff. So we ended up taking more off the car than we were really thinking we'd have to but then we started thinking about the weld splatter or heating things up. We just wanted to get anything potentially, you know, like chrome or something that we might damage out of the, the danger zone. So we stripped a bit more off than we had originally maybe thought we would need to, but we are done plugging all these holes. Pete did a great job welding it up, but hey, windows are out, holes are patched. We got a passenger seat that mounts in there beautifully. So I think that's a wrap. I don't know about you, Pete, but I'm ready for a nap mm -hmm. after all that. We so are done. We are done. Thank you very much for watching everyone. It's really exciting to be making these steps on Connie Salica because it means we're that much closer to paint which means she's that much closer to looking like the supermodel we all know she really is. Let a Toyota Celica GT drive away your troubles. Tachometer, gauges, five-speed manual transmission, all standard. It's a Toyota that makes even ordinary coming and going something to look forward to.